Good morning, everybody. Well, the guys are already here and they started pulling up all their tarps, pulling plastic off of everything now that the paint's dry. And it is looking really, really nice. Man, that looks nice. Let's look at this finish on here. Look at that. That looks good. It gives this house a stucco light -like look outside. And that with that stone, I just think it's beautiful. And it's a semi-gloss finish that looks more like a gloss. You can really see the sheen on it there, or the shine, not the sheen. And uh, that's gonna make it easier to clean and all too, so you get anything on it and you can wipe it off. Birds, bats give droppings on there. Um, and this paint doesn't tend to get that mildew, that mold all on it as much also. So they have put up this temporary bamboo here and they're gonna work on getting all that down and then we're gonna move them over to a new project. I got up this morning and in the midst of editing when a file was converting, I got the vent hood back up. Uh, I'll be working on getting these covers here on there today and I've got this screened louver that's gonna go flat on the outside of the wall. It's probably not the optimal louver but the louver that we originally have for it even though it was supposed to be stainless it wasn't a high grade stainless and the salt spray ate it up so plastic's your friend here for real um i don't know i may upgrade this louver at a later date and time but i am going to paint it and that'll try to protect a little bit more against uv rays make it last longer um one of the reasons I may change it is I might want one that the louver is completely closed 100% when the vena hood's not on, but I'm gonna have to locate one. Well, the guys are moving everything from around the corner that Melinda had over by our master bedroom here. And they are prepping to do the last bit of texture on the walls on this level, on this floor. So the ground floor is done. The top floors are done. All the way around the house that sit right here is done. Um, so... Mop Mock is knocking it on out. June's here helping him. I see Nardo and I believe Nardo's up there. And I know Marvin is too. And they're doing cleanup from the previous work that was done. You can see the dust blowing off the side up there. Chilling like a villain. <laughs> yeah, she's been up and going and busy. She just come in and changed. She's getting ready to go up to the city. She says that they have our occupancy permit finally ready mel she's been persistent on them here lately and uh her persistency has finally paid off yeah. i went down there too but my my attitude i i get high blood <laughs> i'm glad and me i use my charm yeah she used her charm all smile and sweet hey boys Load up in the truck. I'll take you down to see the house. Woo! Hot little fireman. <laughs> Amazing what this can get. <laughs> Marvin came in from gathering eggs. I, I don't remember if this is two or three days gathering. That's going to be three days worth of eggs right there. And uh, these I'm not going to put in the refrigerator i think we got quite a few in there already yeah we got quite a few in the refrigerator already so i'll probably put some of these in the incubator i'm gonna take a pencil mark a date on them and even though there's eggs already in the incubator many of them were not fertile and so i think we're only gonna have like a half a dozen to hatch because the rest of them i've already removed they were not fertile eggs 
and I've kind of figured out which ones aren't fertile. These little small ones, like this right here, that hen that's laying those and one other hen, those are like these two right here. You see there's a difference in color and all. I'll notice it's these, this, this little small and that shade of egg and this small and that shade of egg. I've noticed it's those when I'm checking that are not fertile. So these larger ones like this is what you really want anyway. Uh, them and the darker brown ones like this right here. Um, you can see down in there what I mean darker on some of them than others. Well, I guess according to how the light's hitting in the bucket, but I can see the shading here. And so I know these and the larger ones seem to be the ones and like this over here that are fertile. So what I'll do is pick out these smaller ones and put them in the refrigerator. And then these larger ones, I'm going to put a pencil mark on them of the date and go ahead and add them into the incubator. I won't get a hatch of like a big group all at one time, but I can kind of keep it going without these big gaps in time. Now we're not trying to have the Philippine chicken ranch. <laughs> this ain't going to be the chicken ranch. But what we're doing, the reason we're incubating more is we're sharing them out. We have the eggs, we have the incubator. So like I'm giving some to Melinda's brother, Miller, and he's got a place already prepared over at his house that he's gonna get some of these Rhode Island red chicks and try to raise them over there. Just a small group there for at his house and they'll be able to get eggs and enjoy, hopefully, hopefully everything goes well. Cap's wanting some also. So I can share some to Cap as well. And Cap said he wants one day old. He wants them when they're hatched and dried and they can be transported. He wants them. I want to show you the completed work right here. Ammon did mine. Check that out. Boy, I like it. That looks so good. Tell me what you think, man. Y'all tell me your opinion. But I'm liking it, man. It looks really cool to me. Over here also, he is knocking it out too, man. He'll be done with it on this part in just, just a little while, man. He's moving on pretty quick. I use this premium, what they call heavy-duty Weber tile adhesive. Man, it is really some good stuff. Now, they got a general purpose for smaller tiles. And then they got this heavy duty, and there's a big difference in the flexibility and the bonding agents in it. So over here on the boat project, the bow roller come in. You see it's got six bolt holes here, right? And, uh, man, I just got lucky. It's just pure luck. But you see this little flat area in front of that door and where that light is. Now, that light will have to come off. But... In that area, I'll just kind of hold it up here best I can. Um, all six bolts will bolt down right there in front of that, uh, what you guess you call like a chain locker. Um, all six bolts will bolt down right there in that front. I make a reinforcement plate on the back side underneath it. And... I'll do a, try to do a little profile here again. Let me get a new grip. I'm trying my best here to do this one-man operation, but you can see a little bit. I don't have it over in the middle because that light's there, but you can see it's going to work out really nice right out here on the bow. It's going to look good, so I'm very pleased with that. Well, folks, I'm doing a little cooking up here, so what I've got down in here is some red snapper, two big pieces of red snapper and probably see it on down in there butter this is some hungarian sausage to the side i just threw it in there for the heck of it it's got olive oil on the bottom it's got butter it's got a layer of uh blackening right here blackening season on it there it's got these little small tiny shrimp and these little dried fish dashed around up there on top of it and um Got a little bit of bread come and some butter there on top. And then this is basil grown in our yard, two different kinds, lemon basil and regular basil. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more topping here on it, if I can get it to come out here. If I hear it thundering outside, 
Must be a storm coming up. I don't know if the guys will get the walls painted or not before rain hits them, but they did get all the texture shots. So, so there's a lot of blackening already all down in there, but we're going to add a little bit more on top. And there's a couple of Melinda's chilies from the yard here as well in there. So I've got the oven on here. I'm going to put that right in there to, to bake up for a while. I may put a lid on it for a little bit because I don't want the, that uh, breadcrumbs to scorch just yet. And then I'll brown it at the top. So I'll probably go ahead and get the lid and put on that pan. Well, folks, I don't know how good I'm going to be at it. But I'm going to try to make a little bit of a Cajun cream sauce. So I'm going to melt down a little butter here. I'm going to put a little all-purpose flour. And then I'm going to put a little heavy or all-purpose cream. Looks like it's leaking right there. And... I don't want it too too heavy. I'm gonna add just. The, I'm what I'm nervous of is they put a lot of sugar and stuff in the Philippines, so I might try to counteract too much sweetness. Put a little bit of this pure milk, and then instead of tomatoes and stuff down in it, I'm actually gonna do a different twist and put a little rotel in it, and it's just gonna be a, a little flavor of my own. And you kind of whip this up in a way like a gravy. If I have any luck out here, the wind's starting to try to blow up. Put a little flour. Just about like making a gravy. That hard to work. Then, I'm going to mix that in. We'll cook this up right here just a little bit. Cream in here on this. nice creaminess about it now you see that yeah we'll get that a little bit more don't want any lumps in it oh this is gonna be so good oh it's gonna be so good okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of rotel in right here yep 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 that's what's going to make it yummy. I think that'll be good right there. We'll see. Man, oh man, is this some good, good stuff right here. I think it's really, it's ready. Let me get another taste here. Oh my goodness, man, that is so good. What it needs is a little bit of lime juice right now or some calamansi. I'm going to see if we have some. Add that last little kick onto it. Man, it's gonna be spot on. Well, this is my cooked up fish right here and I just threw this Hungarian sausage to the side. Actually, it adds a little flavor and uh, I like it. So you see there, it's all nice and got a nice coating over the top of it. Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like it's cooked fine. Fine, fine. Mmm, oh my goodness, that's some good stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Slip me another little sliver out of there. Got a little chili right there. Nice little chili pepper grown in the garden here. Yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Boy, it's gonna be so good. So that's some good eating right there. I don't care who you are, boy. Mm. Man, oh man. All those nice flavors of that little small dried fish and, and those shrimp on there and that sausage flavor. I can pick it all up in there, that Hungarian sausage. Ooh. Mouth is full of flavor going right there. All right, folks, there you go right there. Man, there it is. That is my blackened, baked red snapper right there with a Creole cream sauce. It's got a little bit of a flair with using the um, Rotel and a little bit of rice right there underneath for a bed and Hungarian sausage. Since I don't have any Cajun sausage, it worked really good. And this is gonna make a very nice, wonderful meal right here. Just look at that, man, that is wonderful.
little breadcrumbs, a little small shrimp, chili, basils. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice meat right there. Look at that. Mm mm mm. Oh my. Mm. That sauce is spot on with that blackening. It just is. You eat the sauce by itself, it's mm, okay. You put that blackening in there with it. Oh man, it just comes alive. Mm. This is as good as I've had at any restaurant. It's taking a little bit of time to yourself and take care of yourself because I got to run myself a little too hard and I said, whoa, I'm rolling myself back a notch. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna get a bite of the sausage here. Oh man. All these flavors just match together. Mmm. This Hungarian sausage is so good, man. That just actually goes spot on with it. I thought it might. It does, man. It does. It is delicious. Pretty simple little meal to cook right here. Uh, wasn't difficult. Making the sauce wasn't difficult. Cooking that fish up wasn't difficult. Uh, just a few little basic ingredients, and man, you can have yourself a very festive meal right here, full of flavors just bursting in every bite, and a combination of flavors too. It is very refreshing and fulfilling. And a little, I added calamansi into that cream sauce there at the end, and that really just put the perfect kick in it. Mm. Well, he finished up around there on that back staircase and this is how much stone is left over. I bought a total of eight and six, so 14. Yeah, it was 14 square meters. That 12, 20, take all that and multiply it and divide it by the current exchange rate with the USA. I'm out about $310. Right around a $400 project. And that stone here on both sides, on this staircase and on the one side of the front staircase up there. And it's well worth it in my book.